the library has asked me to present this program this afternoon. Maybe the library thinks I'm running out of gas. So wants what knowledge or information I have on old Osterville recorded now. The subject today will be men and women who made Osterville the village it is today by hard work, farming, boat building, going to sea, shell fishing, or any other means of work to generate income just to put food on the table. And yes, sometimes even in times of tragedy, when these situations surfaced and the village, the local folks came together to help out where it was most needed, fulfilling the greatest command to love the Lord first and then your neighbor. As I have researched the history of Osterville, Osterville's past, these two qualities were evidenced in the lives of the local folks. In 1877, Harriet Lovell Dean, who was born in Osterville in 1819, is now living in, in Middleborough, Mass. She writes a much younger sister by 14 years, Augusta, who was living in Osterville, wanting to hear or to know what was going on in the village of her place of birth. Augusta Lovell Rich answered her request with a letter which has, has come down to us and is known as the Rich Letter of 1877. You will find the context of this letter recorded in volume two. Mrs. Rich goes back in her letter to when she was a young girl up to the year 1877 and recalls what she can remember of her early life in Austinville and the people who lived here and where they lived. Our program this afternoon will honor and highlight just a few of the people who lived here years ago and made Osterville the village it is today. So we'll start. Penelope Wake Wiley. She was a granddaughter of Benjamin Hallett lived in the little white house that still stands behind the house and garden. Now a church office. In her early years, she was known as the village, the village nurse. Sorry. I do not know why this is being so difficult. I'm on Lisa again. I don't I do. It's just, it keeps freezing on me. I'm sorry. That's it. Okay, there we go. There we go. Samuel Ames lived on East Bay Road, was village undertaker. The firm today is now known as Doan, Beal, and Ames. He also had two sons. He had daughters as well, Bernard Ames and Walker Ames. Eliza West lived in Old Cape Cod House across from Midway, Garage still standing. First husband was William Hallett, lost at sea in 1863. Grandmother of Bucky Hallett, great grandmother of David Hallett. Nelson Harvey Burse went to sea early in life. Wife was an Ames. He was the first owner of East Bay Lodge. Sarah West lived on Main Street in the house past Joan Peters, decorating shop. Married to Captain Nathan West, captain of the schooner 
Francis W. Edwards. A picture of that appears. There's the, there's the boat right there. Where are we? Next one. Okay, next one, yeah. Otis Crocker. Well, what's so famous about him? Listen. Lived with his folks on Pond Street. In second grade, he came down with scarlet fever. Took months to recover. Became what was known then as deaf and dumb. Now, don't get after me for saying that. But that's an old-fashioned expression. Was an oysterman by trade. Went to school to learn the sign language. Was married, had two daughters. This, despite this tremendous hardship, he lived to be 82 years old. I happen to know the gentleman. He was my grandfather Crocker's old, the oldest brother. Hannah West, wife of Stephen West, a veteran of the War of 1812. Lived in the old Cape Cod house again across from Midway Garage prior to Eliza and William Hallett. This is Henry Crocker. We have, I think, his great-granddaughter here. Went to see an early life Later owned where is now Fancy's Market. Great granddaughter to M M Mrs. Tavella. I wish she was here, but the other great granddaughter is Beverly. I'm sorry, I don't know your last name, but she, she knows who she is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Josephine West. <laughs> daughter of Arasta Scudder. At one time, don't fancy market. Great, great grandmother of Beverly and Mrs. Savilla. Okay. Worthington Crosby. We have a couple here that have a grandchild by the name of Worthington. Son of Terza Lovell Crosby of catboat fame. Live near present boat shops. A great, great granddaughter is Gail Crosby Trafton. I think that's her name. Okay. This is Sophia Small, wife of Civil War veteran James Small, lived on Bay Street. Grandson was Henry Small. Now, I'm going to mention names that some of you people might not even know, but that's the way, only way I could present the program. Okay, go ahead. Okay, this is Horace S. Crosby, son of Terza, brother of Worthington, noted for building cat boats, was the great-grandfather of Malcolm Crosby. If you see him walking around the chair, that's his great-grandfather. Okay. This is Mary Addis Scudder, the first wife of Freeman Scudder, lived in house, now gone, where bicycle shop is located on Main Street, where the bicycle shop is past the house and garden a little bit. This is where this lady, where she lived. Okay, next one. This is her husband, Freeman Scudder. Lived on Main Street, where Bicycle Shop is, was in the coal business, and was the founder of what is now Scudder and Taylor Oil Company. All right. This is Eliza, I'm saying, Ellen Wiley Scudder, daughter of Penelope, the first lady that we showed, lived in the same house behind the house of God, the little white house, which is a church office now. All right. This is Horace Manley Crosby, youngest son of Horace, grandfather of Malcolm. I wish he was here. He's probably watching it on Zoom. 
and many <laughs> others was in the boat building business. All right. Esther Parker Hodges West, married twice, lived on Bay Street and also in a house right to the right of Fancy's Market. The house is still there. All right. And Mrs. Uh, Beverly is a uh, direct descendant of this lady, lady. Afterwards, Beverly, give me a last name. Sorry. Okay. Johnson. <laughs> this is Memphis Hinckley. He served in the Revolutionary War. This is the oldest known likeness of an Osterville person. Lived on Bay Street. A great great grandson was Albert Hinckley, former chief of police. Yeah. Died many years ago. All right. This is Mariah Parker, wife of Jonathan Parker. Their old house is now the Osterville Historical Society. Okay. Oliver Hinckley built boats in Osterville at end of Bay Street. House recently went to the dump. Last house on left. Belonged to Daniel family from about 1879 on, maybe a little bit owned by the Garrison family, but it was a much older house. Uh, wait a minute, I got, and a great, great, great granddaughter is here. In fact, I'll get to her in a minute. She's the one that typed all this up. <laughs> <laughs> she knows who I'm talking. Belina, the next one. Sorry. Belina Parker, that's shown there with her son, married James Parker, who was lost at sea. Great, great grandmother of Carl Riddell. You remember Mrs. Riddell was a Parker. <coughs> Next one. <coughs> All right. James M. Lennon went to sea early in life. Village blacksmith at corner of Main Street and Pond Street. Before that, the shop was at the corner of Ice Valley Road. Started Leonard's Insurance Agency, served in Osterville Silver Band. Grandson was the late Philip Leonard, great granddaughter, Judy Staples, and thank you, Judy. She's the one that typed this up for me. All right. Lucy Coffin, Lucy Coffin Leonard, granddaughter of Terza Crosby, born in California, where her father ran a ferry, a ferry boat business during the gold rush. Lived in house where Casalt Rufus is. Yeah. yeah. Great granddaughter is Judy Staples, who Again, wrote this up for me. All right. Asa Lovell. His old family home was taken down years ago and was located beyond the entrance to the Armstrong Kelly Park. <laughs> was Registry of Deeds for Bastable County. All right. Mary Lovell, a widow for nearly 60 years. Old Cape Cod House at corner of East Bay Road and Bates Street. So if you go down Bates Street, turn right on East Bay Road, that's her house right there. Okay. Charles F. Parker, town of Bastable, clerk and treasurer. Lived where Carter Chesset Condos are, great grandson of Cal Rydell. And I see, Judy, you've got to spell the way they have it spelled. Carter Chesset is spelled C O T O. Now they got it spelled wrong down there, but <laughs> they can keep it that way. <laughs> the next one. 
Lucinda Lovell, wife of James N. Lovell, lived in house where Citizens Bank is now located. This house was moved to Lovell Road a good many years ago now. It's still standing. All right. Zeno Scudder, born on Old Mill Road, house taken down years ago, was representative from here in U.S. Congress, was a member of the Whig Party. You know your history? You know everything about the Whigs. Hey, Martha Lovell came from a large family, born in house on May, Main Street, just past the bicycle shop, was once John Elgin's law office. Oh, sure. Her, her only son hung himself. Mm. Okay. Henry Scudder, born on Old Mill Road, brother of Zeno, was judge in the Superior Court. Okay. Prudence Scudder Lovell married Warren Lovell Jr. Now you people who have lived here as long as I have knew some of her grandsons. They were Kenneth, Herbert, Charles, Bradford, and John. He had a nickname Bullet. That's their <laughs> grandma. Lived in the house torn down years ago to the left of the Vets Club. Oh, if you look at the Vets Club standing on Main Street, the house was right there on the left. All right, next one. This is Robert Cross Sr. Came to the U.S. about 1897, 98. Worked at the Hinkle Gaff Homes Estates that overlooked East Bay. Ran a florist and landscape business here in Austin until the 1950s. Lived at the corner of Main Street and Swift Avenue. So if you head out of town, you get yeah. to Swift Avenue, you turn left, first house on the right, it, over, it overlooks Main Street. Little added note here, he provided flowers for my folks' wedding in 1928, mm. before my time. We hope so. <laughs> All right. Jerusha, that's quite a name. Jerusha Lovell, mother of 14 children, lived in house where Chris Pizza is now located. Not the one in behind Whippies, but the one right down across from the gas station. Her daughter, Augusta, wrote the rich. The rich letter. All right. This is Vincent Cross. Like his brother Robert, ran a florist and landscape business on East Bay Road in the 1920s. Moved his business to up behind what is now Wimpy's. The reason he moved was that his house burnt down. He didn't have any choice. His daughter, Winifred, married Ray Hostetter, who founded Wimpy's. Okay. All right. Adeline Lovell, one of the 12 daughters of Captain Benjamin Hallett, who married George Lovell. Their old house, still standing at corner of Main Street and East Bay Road. It's now owned by the founder of Wayfair Furniture. All right. I think we're doing good time. Yeah. We might get through early. <laughs> <laughs> they might be running out of gas for sure. <laughs> Robert Daniel. Came to Austville as a young man in the 1870s. The family was employed by the Garrison family. Robert bought in the early 1900s the building, 
buildings that make up the Dannel Block. Yep. His granddaughter is Gail Nightingale. Okay. You, uh, Peter and Paul, I want you to listen to this one. Cora Lewis lived in house between Midway Garage and the present fire station. House totally destroyed by fire in 1921. This is what I want you to avoid. According to write-up in the paper, lots of old history pertaining to the Lewis family went up in smoke. That was in 1921. Okay, next one. Thomas Patterson married Alice Lovell, and lived at corner of Main Street and Swift Avenue. Crosses lived here, and this particular house faces, turn left on Swift Avenue, first house on the left, but it faces Main Street. Yep. Uh, served in Massachusetts House of Representatives. The stores across from the house and garden were known as the Patterson Block. All right. This is Georgiana Jones. Her husband was wounded in the Civil War. Their home was heading out of the village just before Calouette. I might not pronounce that right. Calouette Lane, but it's been torn down. The family that lived there last was the John Souza family. All right. Joseph Talmont Sr. came to Osterville in 1886, ran a successful mason business off Wiano Avenue. He had four, had four children. All right. This is Annie West Hodges. I can just about remember this lady. Lived in house next to Joan Peters. I've already mentioned that house. Decorating business. Abe's Electric had a business there a number of years ago. Her great-granddaughter was Anne Clark Harmon. Some of you might have known her. The house was full of antiques when I was a young man. All right. This is Victor Adams. Some of you might remember him, Austin native. The rich letter states that his great great grandparents lived down near the entrance to Dowser's Beach and that they were very poor. Had nothing to eat, nothing, had nothing in house to eat according to the rich letter. Victor, their great-great-grandson here, was a graduate of Brown University and was a town selectman for years. All right. This is Temperance. Oh. Better known as Aunt Tempe. House was once located on the first fairway of Wiano Golf Course. Later moved and taken down. Great grandmother of Max Crosby, who could remember her. Great great grandmother of Malcolm Crosby. Okay. Well, we're getting a few a few modern ones. This is Edward Edward Crossan. Lived on Seaview Avenue during the summer season. The fa his family, especially his daughter, Caroline Cross at Roland, were very generous to the village of Austin. All right. This is Eliza Blount, wife of William Blount. We're going to feature her. Uh, her husband left the Blount cane to the village of Austinville in 1871. We just presented it a couple of weeks ago to Edna Mary Farrington, who was 95 years old. 
They live uh, in a small old white house still standing, located at the corner of, of Main Street and Pond Street. So if you head west out of the village, just before you turn right on Pond Street, that little white house, that's the old Blount house. In fact, my grandfather Crocker was born in that house, believe it or not. Okay. That was my mother's, my mother's maiden name was Crocker, I should emphasize. Chesbro's got nothing to do with Austin, so they're washer shorts. <laughs> <laughs> William Garrison lived summers in the Rihanna section of Austinville. He was a noted abolitionist. He was instrumental in establishing the Austinville Library. All right. All right. We're almost done, which is good. A Zenith, I think that's how you pronounce this, a Zenith Ames, maternal grandmother of Chester Ames Crosby Sr. Their house, the last house on the left before the bridge that crosses to Little Island and Oyster Harbors is still standing. Her husband served in the Mexican War and the Civil War. All right. This is Mr. and Mrs. Armstrong, lived on East Bay Road during the summer season. One of many couples who were very generous to the village of Osterville years ago. Right. All right. This is Augusta. Lovell Rich. He's the one that wrote, wrote the Rich letter in 1877. And it's, it's in volume two. And I'm sorry to say that the Rich letter, I saw the original copy, but it's been lost. She was the grandmother of Elsie Chadwick. Some of you might remember her. She used to work in the post office in Austin. All right, that's the last one, that's good. Mr. and Mrs. Douse, yeah, I see that name all over the village, Save Douse as well, here they are. Mr. and Mrs. Douse, house was destroyed in 1944, hurricane. House located where Bath House is on Douse's Beach. Had two daughters, one, of whom married Sinclair Weeks. He was Secretary of Commerce during the Eisenhower administration. Thank you. This didn't take as long as I oh, thought. Wait. Why do we have one more? Oh, okay, that one. Okay, that's Walker Ames. I showed a picture of Sam Ames in the undertaking business. This is his father. This is, <laughs> this is his son. Walker Dames, he used to be president of the Basketball uh, County Bank. And he had, I think, three daughters, Ann, Carol. Easy. This is Joshua Nickerson and Neil Ames and Walker Jr. All right, that's it. Thank you. I'll give you. Uh, next month we could do, do maybe a, a few more. I didn't know. We didn't know how long it would take. What time is it? Half of those half. It took hour. a half hour, so you could go home early. Put it down the library. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. I trust you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions on Austinville, you better get a hold of me. <laughs>